Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Bagyan podcast. Um, again, we are here with Nikhil. Um, and as, as all of you know, we host these podcasts to learn from people with a lot of experience in the cybersecurity space and share that with our community of ethical hackers so that they're able to learn and, you know, maybe give, give a shot at ethical hacking. So uh, welcome, Nikhil, uh, introducing him quickly. Um, so Nikhil, I'm pretty sure uh, you, many of you already know him by Nick's and, you know, his work in Sinac and Cobalt. So Nikhil is a Sinac legend, uh, has been, you know, working with Sinac Red Team for a while now. Uh, in fact, he is the, on the top 10 leaderboard of Sinac Red Team. And in India, he is number one from Sinac. Uh, he's also working with Cobalt as a lead pen tester. And uh, overall, he has a very good wide, you know, understanding in the security space from bug bounty to red teaming to traditional pen testing, right? Um, so he has a vast understanding of uh, security and he's also the founder of B-Sides Ahmedabad and the one hosting that conference. In fact, that's how we met. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Nikhil. Thank you for having me, Dhruv. Great, great having you. So, uh, Nikhil, we'll, we'll dive right in, right? We, we won't hold back. So, um, just, you know, want to understand from you, what is your overview of, you know, bug bounty programs? So, in the past, it, it always used to be traditional pen testing, right? Uh, bug bounty, red teaming is something that has popped in recently. Um, what is your overview of bug bounty? Why do you think it is important to the ecosystem? And do you feel that bug bounty all in all is building up the ecosystem faster than a traditional, you know, security kind of a thing? Would? So, yeah, uh, I guess uh, the bug bounty thing, uh, I first uh, I first heard, heard, heard about it from, uh, from the PayPal, PayPal bug bounty in 2010. And... Uh, after that, a lot of companies comes in like Google, Facebook, uh, Yahoo. Uh, a lot of a lot of companies come in, and but but they but they have started uh, as an independent program. So researchers come uh, onto the onto the company's uh, email address, uh, submit the bug, and uh, they'll be uh, given the recognition. But this, uh, but but the uh, payment thing has started, I guess, in 2012 uh, when uh, Google launched their own bug bounties, bug bounty program, and uh, uh, they listed out all the critical uh, assets and all the uh, medium and all the low uh, low uh, assets, and uh, they set up the bounty uh, bounties uh, over it. So I guess uh, from from there, a uh, uh, bug bounty culture has started, and uh, this platform culture has launched after the hacker one started in 2014. Uh, I guess 2013 or 14. So firstly, they were doing just with the uh, with the uh, internet bug bounty, uh, the internet or some uh, big big. Uh, big short companies but uh, later they moved on to the web application mobile application and the, and other assets and uh, then then the cinec comes in and then the cobalt jumps in uh, there are like four or five companies uh, were there uh, at that time and later a uh, lot of companies comes in uh, just like integrity uh, bugbase uh, a lot of more companies uh, join join the uh, join this market, but uh, I guess uh, the culture uh, has started building uh, very uh, on on very early days. But uh, nowadays, like uh, it's 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 become uh, uh, more of a, like uh, more of learning because uh, more more you learn, uh, the more you get success on these platforms. So uh, so. Uh, I guess uh, that's how uh, this 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 culture has been built uh, uh, from uh, all these years. I no, think that sense. that's. No, no, Nikhil, that's... I think that makes sense. I think you know it, it started off with Google, as you said, right? In fact, in many of my meetings, I'm the one quoting, "Key, okay, Google is the one who started it," and uh, I compare, you know, everybody's cybersecurity posture to the posture that Google has. It's okay, you're you're at this stage right now, but eventually you have to get there, right? So so that's that's I think a great example. Um, can you, you know, so bug bounties, you know, as you said, attract practically everyone from all over the world, right? There's a strong culture building. All these platforms have kind of popped in. Um, you know, there are global and, you know, say local uh, platforms that are running. Um, my question to you is that when, you know, you have so many people coming in, right? And you, you've been a bug bounty hunter as well. Um, how is it that you ensure trust, right? Because for a company, what happens very often 
is uh, and I have faced this as well. You must have faced this as well. They they think okay, you know, externally somebody is coming. Crowdsourced is a bad thing, right? So, what is your opinion on you know trust with regards to ethical hackers? What is your opinion on companies demanding KYC from ethical hackers? What is your opinion on you know de-anonymizing the ethical hackers who are trying to do something good maybe? So, I guess uh, uh, the companies they that that wants uh, to have some trusted researchers or trusted uh, hackers on on their platform uh, or on on their pro uh, program, so they they go through uh, some processes like background check or something like that. So they they are they probably ask for uh, with the platform that uh, we we require this kind of uh, uh, procedure to uh, go through it, but. Uh, all in all, if, if I say that uh, if you are uh, running a program on a on a platform, and uh, if you if you want trusted researchers, there is always choice uh, on uh, for, uh, for, for uh, there is always choice uh, on platform, which you can uh, ask from their uh, owners or their uh, teams uh, to uh, to let let them join in. So, like recently, I've been uh, I've been added to a, a big company, a big. Uh, uh, corporate company in the uh, US and they uh, they specifically asked me to go through a background check and uh, and a complete uh, uh, sharing all the records uh, or police verification and everything so it's like uh, it's up to the client if if they ask for uh, trusted uh, trusted researchers they they'll get it get it for it uh, from the platform itself well that makes sense Nikhil. but my question is more around what you feel that is more effective as a program right so for driving an effective program, is it more important to have a volume of security researchers or do you think it's more important to have a limited group of trusted researchers? So uh, I think uh, if you go for uh, more trusted researchers, I guess uh, there is more, more, more possibility of getting uh, high quality reports and uh, high severity reports. And uh, if you go with the more crowd, I guess there is chance of uh, more noise and rather than the, the quality reports. So that will be a big difference between uh, both. No, I think that makes sense. And that's what many companies see as well when they launch a VDP or they launch a bug bounty on their own website, not associating with a platform. About 60, 70 of the bugs that they get are either duplicates or you know invalid spam. Um, and engaging every single one of these ethical actors does become a tedious job. So I feel that you should start off with maybe a trusted crowd. And once you're comfortable with that, take that ahead, you know, into a public, like someone like a Google has. What do you think of that? Yeah, definitely, definitely. If you uh, see these platforms, they uh, they start as a private, uh, and the program is started as a private, then they launch it to uh, all the public when they become more mature or they have a confidence that we can go public and uh, have more crowd in. But I have I have uh, listened, I have heard, heard from a lot of uh, my uh, triage, triage friends that uh, uh, if you're triaging on a, on a platform, uh, expect 60 70 percent noise and uh, rest yeah. rest rest of the <laughs> our quality reports no for sure so I, I run a platform so i know that very well right <laughs> so for sure that is very well and your triage of friends are telling you facts uh, but it's an interesting process at the back end as well you should you should certainly check it up all right definitely so coming to my next question on you know bug bounties themselves right um what is often said is that you don't need a degree for bug bounty and you anybody can get it so, um, you know, people from tier two, tier three cities are often told that, okay, you know, here's the BMW that I got just by doing bug bounty. Um, you can do it as well. You should go for it. So what is your opinion on, you know, um, what is the skill required for bug bounty? And uh, can bug bounty on its own, you know, slowly bridge the skill gap for you to get into security when you don't have a IT education? So I guess... Uh... This is the myth from the start that uh, you need a, a degree to get into any field actually, yeah. and doing and doing good, and doing not doing great things. Uh, I personally uh, was a dropout, and uh, and my my uh, teachers and everyone like uh, you you are not fit for uh, technical and everything. But uh, yeah, but these all these years have uh, proved them, I guess. And uh, I guess. Uh, degrees are not 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 such important but uh, it's good to have because uh, because some uh, some some companies required it or some some countries required it for uh, uh, so for making you uh, uh, like uh, like giving you a uh, visa or uh, uh, like uh, recommend like like giving you a uh, 
skill that uh, you are a skilled worker or something like, like that. Like a certification. Uh, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, these 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 things uh, these things require for uh, these these purposes. But uh, like uh, for if you're if you're working uh, if you're if you're good into your skill, uh, I mean, good into your uh, work. I guess uh, degrees are not much important, and uh, you can. Uh, I mean, you can just uh, straight away go to, uh, go to the uh, go to the um, uh, target and uh, start hunting. So yeah. No, I think that makes sense. And uh, you know, you say go straight away to a target and start hunting. Do you think for a first-time ethical hacker, it makes more sense to go to uh, platforms, or do you think it makes more sense to go to say an individual VDP or a you know bug bounty that the company is running where there may be less traffic? I guess that's that depends on uh, how skillful the tester is. Uh, I have seen all yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So first time testers. Yes. Okay. So uh, I guess learn first. Firstly, uh, learn learn about all the basics and then then uh, uh, start hunting from from the main program. I guess uh, it's it's worth it's not worth to give uh, uh, bugs to VDPs or other program because uh, uh, because they are also I mean they are big most if you see the more most most of the companies uh, which are running uh, VDPs are also earning good uh, from the market so mm-hmm. wh- why do, why don't you give give back to the community if you are if they are uh, securing your uh, you only correct no like I think I think that makes a lot of sense and that really resonates with how I pitch bug base as well right um, and we've seen this time and again when and you know a lot of the web three blockchain companies that are out there. Uh, you can see the volume of transactions that they have because it's all public, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, all public, yeah. Yet when they give a $1,000 bounty, uh, of course, an ethical hacker will say, this could have costed you over a billion dollars, right? It's so, also it's also give uh, motivation to the company that if, if we are getting this much traffic from uh, just, just from VDP, why, why do we go for uh, a, a bug bounty program then? No, for sure. That is there. So that is, I think, something, uh, you know, both ethical hackers as well as leaderships and CTOs, CIOs need to understand that it's a community thing and you need to invest in it, right? Um, if the community is built out and you're just taking from it, okay, you can start off with that, but eventually you should also invest in it and the returns you see are, of course, you know, tenfold. Yeah. So, um, I consider it like you, like your own security teams that are uh, working for you uh, all day and night and uh, you must you must uh, give, back to, give, give back something to them. Exactly. No, for sure. That makes total sense. All right. Uh, coming to my next question, right? Uh, now I'm moving away from bounty hunters. I'm coming more to uh, leadership, right? So as we were talking about them right now. Um, so a lot of, you know, you, you've worked under a lot of people, right? And now, you know, you have founded something of your own as well. Um, do you think, and, and already connected to my previous thing, um, the leader, the CTO, the CISO, uh, should be an operator or should they be a business background person and only look at you know inputs and outputs uh, because there's a big question in the industry right a lot of lot of CISOs or CIOs are um, you know they don't have a security background they don't have an OSCP they're, they've never done you know try hack me um, and and then there are many as well who are now emerging who have that background of working as the security engineer who's working under them uh, which one do you think you know uh, should be the leaders at companies uh, in the in, in the ideal world. I guess a, a combination of both is good. Like uh, they must have some uh, technical background uh, or, or or a security background, and uh, they also have a management background too. So uh, it it will uh, it will give balance uh, and also uh, like uh, if if like like if there is some. Uh, uh, some problem comes in or some some issues uh, some technical issues or some technical problems coming they call, they can also give their input and uh, uh, they are all, they are uh, they are actually uh, they they actually know who who uh, who is best to uh, 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 to uh, take this uh, i mean who who is best to give give these issues uh, to uh, which can which can fall, solve solve these problems no makes so i guess sense. a balance yeah yeah, yeah, I think a big balance is required. What many security engineers and you know bug bounty hunters were working at their companies feel is that okay, the person who's telling me what to do maybe does not know what to do himself, right? So um, on your end, key there should be a level of technical experience and there should be a level of management experience as well 
uh, really does resonate with a lot of people who you know basically watch this yeah you, if you, if you, if you see why a technical technical guy go for mba so they they take a, a balance on both both sides so uh, they do good more good things uh, uh, in 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 their career in future no for sure for sure no i th- i think that's a great answer um now i'd like to divert a bit from bug bounty and come to red teaming since that's also something you know you have been a part of um as you know traditional pen testing is kind of fading away uh, bug bounty is becoming popular but i feel red teaming is also becoming extremely popular nowadays right so every cio c uh, cso i go talk to they often mention that okay a red team exercise is something i want how, how do you think the market around red teaming per se is evolving uh, and how do you think it contrasts to something like a bug bounty program? I guess, uh, I guess, uh, like uh, if you see more and more big uh, enterprise organization, we, which you talked talked about, uh, they have a very uh, critical infrastructure and very uh, conflict con- complex infrastructure. I guess uh, that is the main reason, uh, which uh, which is why uh, everyone wants to have a red teaming exercise because they don't know what uh, what is. Uh, uh, hidden behind uh, in, behind their uh, all the assets, and uh, that is why I guess uh, the red teaming is uh, such a popular thing right uh, nowadays. To uh, to I mean, like all the enterprises companies likely have to uh, likely to have it uh, at least uh, once or twice uh, in a uh, in a year. No, I think that makes sense. Um, but still, I see red teaming is not a compliantary requirement. Correct. It's always just the pen testing. Do you think red teaming or you know bug bounty or anything should become a compliance requirement for the company? Like you need to do this. Uh, I'm not I'm not much uh, uh into the into the compliance side, so uh, I can't comment on uh, the like if if it's uh, compliant or not. But I guess uh it's it's good to have uh I mean uh, uh if you, if you see an uh, external point of view uh. You should you should have a bug bounty uh, running into into your company because you will get uh, the external uh, uh, you will get the reports uh, as part of uh, external uh, attackers point of view mm-hmm. and uh, if you if you get to the point that uh, you gain access to let's say you get RC into the system then the red teaming comes into place. Uh, what how deep you can go uh, uh, so i guess both both have their own uh, own values so uh, we can't uh, like differentiate between both no fair enough fair enough um i i think as you said that makes sense uh, bug bounty is more of horizontal he okay find all the gaps and then red teaming is vertical as deep as you can go yeah definitely i think that makes a lot of sense um, and I'm starting to see it become pretty big as well. Right? So um, my next question is more around the lines of learning, right? So starting off in security is always a big question that, you know, everyone is kind of always confused around. I think, you know, one big reason is also there is no BTEC for cybersecurity in India, right? Um, even if you look at someone like a VIT, they probably don't teach you real security. So, you know, what is your POV on this? Um, what was your own story? I would love to learn with regards to how you got started in the space. Um, not just bug bounty, you can, you know, talk about just becoming, entering the security space. So, you know, being just a student or, you know, just a working professional to someone who is one of the most demanded, you know, security engineers in the world, right? So how did that work for you? How do you think that will work for someone today? I guess most of the most of the universities uh, in India, uh, I guess they are uh, more of uh, like theoretical. Uh, le- learn you most most of the theoretical aspect of uh, cyber security and not the practical ones, and uh, and we do not have uh, such skill level uh, of uh, like I guess uh, teachers or uh, prof- professors in uh, in India. I guess, and I I guess. Uh, uh, if you if you go uh, out of india like us or uh, europe uh, any 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 uh, um, university that is running a cyber security course i guess they are more into a uh, practical aspect of the site that, right. that that is that is why i have heard from from the friends uh, so so it's like uh, so uh, when i when i have started 
there was i mean um, no one knows about the cyber security or bug bounties or hacking and stuffs mm-hmm. and uh, uh, i i started from my college days only uh, so i'm also from jaipur uh, i guess you guys are uh, also started from the jaipur <laughs> Well, we we started from uh, Delhi and Ahmedabad, so right in between, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so uh, yeah, so uh, uh, in my college day, I used to I used to go, I mean, hack Wi-Fi and those those things like hack Wi-Fi, uh, hack uh, just I was I was a bit of a black hat that, at uh, that, that time. Yeah. <laughs> I was a bit of black hat at that time. So like. Uh, i find i find like uh, it's fun to uh, i mean fun to hack on this and that uh, at that time but like uh, i i started learning from uh, from that point only and uh, like uh, there was not not much uh, blog culture or youtube culture at that time uh, which which nowadays have and uh, i started like uh, self learning i mean self uh, uh, learning from uh, from the hack forums or uh, uh, which whichever res- resources are available at that time and uh, uh, i i i would like to apply apply uh, those uh, uh, tricks or those uh, uh, techniques uh, uh, practically and uh, uh, that's that's how i started and uh, then i guess uh, after after college uh, i had no job and uh, uh, i was like uh, i don't know what to do <laughs> at that time because uh, cyber security is not a major thing uh, at that time not a major thing uh, today as well but uh, not not like it's like uh, they are still de- uh, developing now uh, but at that time there was uh, nothing on the cyber security i'm talking about the 2012 or 2011 yeah. and uh, yeah then then uh, i guess uh, the google bug bounty comes in uh, in 2012 when they started paying for uh, paying for the bugs you report so uh, i guess i, I thought uh, this is this is the good thing to have like uh, report bugs on google itself and uh, getting uh, paid for a paid out of it so uh, i started uh, i started at, in 2012 uh, like uh, in bug bounties and uh, like from google like i reported like uh, uh, many reports in uh, on the first year and i guess uh, 90% of my reports got duplicate <laughs> that's so... the same story for <laughs> so uh, but but i i didn't give up i then after after google i guess uh, the yahoo has started their bug bounties uh, so i reported some things uh, some 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 stuff there and uh, i guess 40% of them are duplicates and rest of them got paid and uh, then after uh, microsoft comes in and uh, uh, i guess all of my stuff got accepted and uh, they have been paid like uh, i was uh, uh top 100 researchers in microsoft uh, in 2015 and uh, that that boosts my con- confidence uh, and uh, then the uh, hacker one comes in synac comes in and uh, a lot of platforms uh, joins in and uh, uh, uh i guess fr- from that point uh, i i have taken so much of confidence that uh, uh, i like i i never <laughs> look back and uh, just keep keeps going <laughs> no oh, makes sense but i think yeah. i think you know starting off from a black hat as you said is a story of everyone right everyone is always intrigued into cyber security with the sense ki okay wifi hack ho jayega right so um, that's i think a similar story and then you start to realize as you said ki okay this can actually be applied for good and uh, the second you win something right uh, that work boosts your confidence and you can keep going right so uh, i think i i had a very similar story on that end as well uh, just with the ctf right so one the ctf and that really pushed me to explore cyber security to a great level so uh um, really great to hear your story as well on on how this whole thing worked out um now nikhil just wanted to check you know for, from your end right um what is it that you're up to now right um of course you know you're you're doing multiple you know uh, roles at big companies now and you're starting besides ahmedabad as well um so what is you know what is next for nikhil shivastav um in terms of the cyber security landscape what are you looking to launch what are you looking to work at anything specific that you really care about that you want to talk about uh there's nothing new like uh, 
uh, I'm working on a InfoSip jobs portal uh, that is uh, coming along uh, with with the I'm launching with the B sites next, uh, like B sites and the uh, and uh, in collaboration with this platform. So, uh, like I would like to bridge the uh, talent gap uh, that that is in India. I guess uh, I I was reading some article in. Uh, Times of India that uh, there is like a 25 million of uh, uh, talent requirement in India till since uh, I mean till 2025 I guess uh, so like uh, uh, this is the next <laughs> next next thing I, I have taken on so uh, I'll going I, I'm I'm still building it and uh, probably launch in uh, one or two months. No, uh, seriously, I think that's a yeah, it's a good problem you picked up. In fact, uh, in my conversations with a lot of stakeholders and a lot of, you know, VCs from, you know, everyone, uh, everyone noticed that article that you're talking about, right? Uh, and if you look at it, really, that is the reality because at many of these companies, the hiring process is not very security inclined, right? Because these guys are looking for degree as, you know, all, all yes. is do. Um, but security is something that cannot, cannot be judged by a degree. And um, even if you're not judging by degree, how do you judge it, right? Um, most companies don't have a CTF kind of a process set in place to hire. In fact, very few that have something like that. Uh, they go about the traditional way, and I, I I can really agree with you that this this kind of a way is not possible. So a platform like that could actually be great. Definitely, definitely. No, for sure. We'll we we'll look forward to you launching that uh, you know platform, and we'll also look forward to being there at B sides Ahmedabad uh, in the coming year. Um, for sure, for sure. It's a great event. And, uh, and yeah, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. We'll keep it short and sweet for everyone to go through. Um, thank you thank for you. having me. Thank you for having me, Katan. Thank you for having me, Dhruv. Great. great.